So I'm Mark Germain, very pleased to be doing this interview with you. I have a long history in the biotech life science field. I got started in the early 90s when it was in its infancy and with various partners over the years. I was a co-founder of a number of companies. Many of them have been highly successful, well-known names in the biotech, biopharma sector in particular. Uh, I was a, a board member of most of those, chairman or co-chairman of many of them. Worked with young teams, typically young companies, uh, helped to define the goal of the company, the strategies to achieve the goal, and the implementation of those strategies as well. Uh, I have a, a legal background, but also over the years developed a strong scientific background. Uh, I read a lot of the science peer-reviewed articles to make sure I understand it as well as a non-scientist can. Um, and as I said, work hand in hand with senior management uh, as an ally to, to help make sure that the company succeeds. Lunit is my next pick. Um, <laughs> my next child in a way, because I, I do view these companies uh, as children almost. People have often asked, which is my favorite company? And my answer is always the last one I speak about, because they're, they're all like children. Um, I get involved. I'm, you know, the reason I, I got involved in Lunit, I was introduced through a common a friend that, that I have with senior management. He thought highly of the company. I had already spent a good deal of time in Korea, working with major healthcare players in Korea. I like Korea, I like the people, I like the work, work ethic. So, you know, I was naturally attracted in any event. And then I found, as I got to know Brandon and the management team, uh, that they had all of those qualities. They're very smart, they're very energetic. They're also willing to listen, accept advice, they're not arrogant. So all of the qualities that I like to see in a, in a management team. AI can certainly play a key role. It, it depends on the AI, how it's been put together. Is it built with a, a bias from the outset that's driving towards a predetermined output outcome? or is it really there to analyze data objectively and guide people? Uh, my understanding of the Lunit AI is that it's the latter, which is what you would prefer. Do a better job at analyzing data than humans can do on their own, but not with a predetermined target or output in mind, rather than where the data leads you. Uh, and that was kind of a, one of the first questions that I discussed, and it's very important. I think in general in this space, what I think Lunit, because they do appear to be, if not the best, among the best uh, at, at what they've done, is to move us much closer to the reality of personalized precision medicine rather than the concept, which is thrown around quite a bit now without any underlying substance. And that's very attractive to me. I've had other experiences uh, around that area. How do we go from calling something personalized and precise for the individual uh, versus actually making it meaningful for that individual? Well, I think a large part of it is being able to use the AI to identify data points that would go unrecognized, factor them in, look across broader arrays of data, and again, analyze that, see more important trends, so that when you look at the, you know, whether it's a blood sample, a tissue sample, a, a scan, an X-ray of an individual, what you're telling that individual is diagnostic, rather than giving that individual odds. Bookies give you odds doctors should give you a diagnosis. It's not 100% there yet, but it's moving much closer through the tools that Lunit is developing. And that's important. You don't want to be told that your odds of getting the disease by the time you're 70 is much higher. If the doctor simply tells you you have higher odds, all it does is create anxiety. 
right? So we have to close that gap significantly, and that's what I think LUNIT is approaching. It's not 100%, but they're closing that gap in a significant way so that it's more related to your condition rather than you as part of a bigger population. I think it's great. It's a great stamp of approval and validation because they could choose anybody. And I have no doubt that they scanned the entire field to see who was best suited to be that partner. You have a company that's in a very short period of time become highly successful, groundbreaking technology, LUNID is kind of where Garden was about nine years ago, and the fact that, that Garden at this point decided to invest in LUNID, not just invest, but partner and sees it as a true partner that can really expand the scope of what Garden is doing and in the process what LUNID is doing. So I think it's a, it's a great validation for the company. Again, I think as people are able to collect more data, more comprehensive data, the ability of humans to analyze the data gets more and more limited. So AI has to be deployed to do it better than we can do it. AI has to be used in order to do that properly, accurately, and repeatedly without a lot of variation. You know, there, there will always be a human element. Years ago, I found this quote that, you know, somehow people have to take information, turn it into data, turn data into knowledge, and ultimately knowledge into wisdom. There's this progression. The last step of turning it into wisdom is what we do. AI should be doing almost everything up to that point. And as the amount of data grows exponentially, it becomes more and more important that software and AI do everything up to that last step.